Here at Holt Nurseries, every week we're going to feature a different plant. And this week we're going to feature carnivorous plants. Let's take a closer look. We have tens of thousands of carnivorous plants. It's the most popular plant here at Holt Nurseries. I have Venus flytraps. I have Nepenthes. I have sundews. I have butterworts. And many varieties of each. Let's take a look. I forgot to mention Saracenia. It's another one of our great selling carnivorous plants. What is our best selling carnivorous plant? Well, it's probably the Venus flytrap. Each bench holds up to 8,000 pots. In the wintertime, we use artificial light. The more light we use, the redder the traps get. This is our pinwicular or our butterwort. It is, um, it is a rarer plant, it's hard for us to get. You wouldn't think it would be hard to get because these are viviparous. They form little babies on each of the leaves, but they're hard for us to reproduce. But they're beautiful, they're covered in these light pink flowers for several months of the year. This is our sundews. We have Capensis red, we got Capensis white, we got Alicia, we got Paradoxa, and Spatulata. If you can only have one type of carnivorous, I would say get Nepenthes St. Gaia. It's by far the most bang for the buck. We also have several other varieties of Nepenthes available. We have Ampularia Black Miracle Hybrid, Bloody Mary, Rebecca Soper, Nepenthes Aleda. This is our tissue culture tent where we start all our carnivorous plants. They come in extremely small. Here, let me show you. So we get them in this small from overseas. And then we grow them in this tent for about 90 days. And then we transfer them out into the greenhouse to finish in another 60 to 90 days. So it takes five to six months to grow all of our carnivorous plants. So we're experimenting with growing things in these domes. Um, everything doesn't need a dome. We're experimenting what works best with the dome, what works best without the dome. This is Drosera paradoxa. We're experimenting by doing carnivorous by seed. And if we can get it down, we could grow tens of thousands of them. And right here we are trying with a community tray of Saracenias. And in this plug tray here, we got Drosera. What we have here is Mexican Pinwicula being grown in perlite and vermiculite. For the longest time, I was trying to grow them in peat. And not all of the butterworts like water. Some of them grow up in the mountains. So we try different media, we try different growing conditions, and we see how we can grow these plants. I'm gonna talk a little bit now about the carnivorous soil. We use two different types of soil. The one soil we use is the sphagnum moss, the, the compressed bale. So we buy these compressed bales of sphagnum moss. It doesn't have to be a compressed bale. And we use this for all the Venus fly traps and we use it for all of the Nepenthes. And the other soil we use oh, oh, is, the, is the Canadian peat. This is the same Canadian peat that you can buy at Home Depot. Do not use potting mix. Carnivorous plants like low pH, and this is perfect at pH 4.5. We pot up all our Drosera in here, and that's the only thing we do. We do the Drosera, and we, oh, Saracenias. We do, we do Saracenias, if we do Saracenias in two inch pots, we use the sphagnum moss, but if we do Saracenias in three inch pots, we use the Canadian peat, only because of price. Believe it or not, this little bale right here, cost me $100, and that's by the pallet. There's 42 bales on the pallet, and it's $4,200 for a pallet of this. 
This costs about 20 bucks. We're gonna pot up a little Nepenthes garden and we're gonna pot up a little Drosera, which is the sundew garden. And I already showed you the mix we use. So what we do is we take this, we break it up like this, into shred it into little pieces, and then we soak it in a tub. And you can see here, it's all broken, it's all hydrated, and then we can pot our plants. We do the same thing with the Canadian peat. We're almost done here, but we do the same thing with the Canadian peat. We get it all soft and hydrated and we pot our plants. Oh, one other thing too, it is suggested when working with a long fiber sphagnum moss to wear gloves. I don't pot much, so anymore, I don't pot much anymore. So, but I, but I always tell my employees they should wear gloves. Okay, so I said we're gonna do a Nepenthes garden in long fiber sphagnum moss. And we are gonna do a Dracera garden in Canadian peat. Now, these are gonna be hopefully maintenance free gardens because we have pots with no holes here. So I'm gonna put a little water in here. I'm gonna keep these half filled with water and hopefully you're only gonna have to water these once a week, two, three times a month. The biggest thing that happens with carnivorous plants is they dry out. I am shocked when I bring it home sometimes and just put my little two inch pot on the counter. In 48 hours it can be dried out and dead. And sometimes you forget the water, so if you use a saucer that has no holes in it, it will be fantastic. This right here is Drosera capensis. So it's just as easy as pulling it out of the pot, making a little hole, and sticking it in. Taking it out of the pot. There's my little mini Drosera garden. I'm sure everyone interested in Nepenthes have seen the big baskets of Alada, big baskets of Miranda. They sell them in six and eight inch baskets. But something we do here, we do lots of different types of Nepenthes. So you could actually make one basket of Nepenthes with multiple varieties in it. So what I have here is that's a Miranda, we're gonna put a Black Miracle in there. And we're also gonna put in there a Rebecca Sober. Okay, and there we have it. We have a little Nepenthes garden and we got a little Drosera garden. There's no holes in the bottom of this, just keep some water in here, don't let it dry out, and you should be good to go on your windowsill. We will see you next week, and don't forget to like and subscribe, okay? Yeah.